just in case you missed it, Terrence Crawford missed all these shots right here, and Sean Porter takes a knee smartly. The only punch he lands is to the back of his head, but listen to Sean Porter in his own words break down the round. Crawford had you hurt in a way that Spence did it in that 11th round. Were you, was that the most hurt you've been as a pro, Sean? Most hurt I've been as a pro. And I was actually thinking about it before we came here to do this. He, he hit me clean. A, a ton. He, and he hit me clean a ton, and I, I didn't keep my hands up. Even, but in that moment, when the first knockdown happened, I lost my composure. And even though you couldn't see it on the outside, here's the funny thing about boxing. Everything's internal in boxing. All of our energy, all, all of our injuries are internal. Uh, everything that we have is all of it's eternal, and we have to mask it. And then on the outside, we have to be a superhero to the man we're fighting, a superhero to the crowd, a superhero to the judges. And even though you guys didn't see it, I was thinking about that on the inside in my mind. I was like, I'm getting hit, I'm getting hit, I'm getting hit, and I went down off of off of an uppercut at the at the uh. I had to censor myself right there. I went down off of an uppercut. The first time that I went down, I was like, you're, I was like, you're good. I got up with no problem. I actually was not as hurt as I was against against uh, Crawford. Or excuse me, as, uh, as I was against Earl Smith Jr. And I looked over at my corner, let my dad know that I was okay. But I lost my composure. And it was because I got hit clean more than I'm used to. And once we got back fighting, I told this is what I went through with my wife. I said when you when you when you get put down or you the judges see you get hit clean, I said I it's I said it was a moment where I should have retreated. I said, but when I retreat, I lose that round. Now you say, hey, you, you got knocked down, so you already lose that round. But then what am I what energy am I giving my opponent? I retreat, gives him more energy to keep coming at me, gives him energy. He forgets about fatigue. He forgets about the punches that he threw, all that kind of stuff. And the only thing he's focused on is getting me out of there. I didn't want to give that to Terrence. And then the only other side of it is, is the judging as, as well. If you let, if you give them any indication that you're any more hurt than you are, guess what? If you come out fresh in the 11th round, they're stuck on what happened in that last round and how injured you were in that last round. They don't really see things the way. So I told my wife, like, I kept going because I did not want Crawford to get any more momentum than he already had. And I didn't want the judges to have any any anything else to hold on to leading, leading to 11th and 12th round. I, I go at Terrence and then I, I lost, but I lost my composure. It was like, you're getting hit. Keep your hands up. Use your defense and move. And it was like in that in that moment, and that's just kind of what happens at the elite level. There's moments you felt the need to hit him back with something hard immediately. I felt the need to hit him back, and uh, and I also felt that once I got hit some more, it was like I was talking to myself again. Like you're getting hit, you're getting hit. Boom, you went down again, and that's when you see me slamming my my fist on the ground because I'm like, you know what you're doing. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what you're doing. And I just was so mad. And, uh, you know, my dad says, hey, I knew that uh, this this could happen in this fight. I knew that this might be coming. So my dad stepped up on the on the apron. I wasn't expecting that. Um, hey, that's the first time we ever had to deal with it. And I, we've had conversations actually on the podcast. And I, t- I said, I'm like, yeah, my dad knows what to do. And I can't argue with my dad. My dad... You don't see, Sean Porter's not the fighter that takes six or seven shots clean in the road the way that I did against Terrence Crawford. My dad knows who's across the ring. Terrence ain't going to stop. Terrence is a sharpshooter. And he is who he is, man. One of the best to do it. Listen, what I want to start off by saying is that, man, that fight was great, especially at the stadium. And they were, it was a pro uh, Terrence uh, Crawford crowd. But you had your Porter people there, man, and it was exactly what I expected, man. Um, Sean Porter even came out, you know, dedicating uh, the fight to Marvin Hagler. Yeah, war on the back. It was a, it was an exciting fight. But the stoppage robbed us of it. It didn't really, it, it didn't really rob boxing fans. It robbed Sean Porter, and that's the most sad part about it is that it's Kenny Porter's son. And, you know, it was about ego. The stoppage was about ego and nothing else. 
it took me a while to drop this video, but you know I keep it real. As a matter of fact, me and my homeboy Real Talk Boxing, go subscribe to his channel, was having this conversation about the premature stoppage. So I've been looking at YouTube to see if it was as many conspiracy videos as it was with Wilder during his fight. You know, both fights, as a matter of fact. Shit, all three. It was a conspiracy after every single fight. So I've been sitting back waiting for these conspiracies to come out, and they never came, man. They never came because uh, fanboys control uh, narratives on YouTube, and it's sad because they don't, they're not knowledgeable enough about the sport to where they really do have a conspiracy that'll get them the clicks and likes and views that they, they, they starving for, that they don't even hop on it. This fight will stop prematurely. And I'm going to show you in this video exactly what I'm saying, because men lie, women lie, film doesn't. You give a person enough time of just talking and you know what you're looking for and your experience, you could, you know, decipher what they're really saying. And the fact of the matter is this fight was stopped off of ego. Kenny Porter had problems with Sean Porter in the camp before the fight. Sean Porter thinks of Kenny Porter now, not only as a father, but as a team, because Sean's the one taking the punches, not Kenny Porter. And it's causing problems. Listen to Kenny Porter talk about the problems that I was telling you about earlier that started in the camp. Do you think Sean's role as an analyst, do you think that's helped him at all in the ring? With the he says it has. He says it has. I think it became a problem for us. I, I think it became a problem not that he was away too much or anything like that. It's great. You know, it never came a problem like that. I think it became a problem for us. You know, sometimes when you're doing stuff in the gym, he wants to tell me, well, see, what I saw right here in this particular situation, and I need to be moving this way, and I said, okay, listen, are you analyzing or are you going to box today? Well, I'm just saying that, you know, we're a team, so from my perspective of right here, and I'm like, this dude being an analyst right now, right? I said, I'll tell you what, here's what I want you to do. Since that's what you're going to do, Sean. I said, here's what I want you to do. Tomorrow, when we come, I'm going to let you take over this workout session today, but tomorrow when we come back, I'm going to need you to follow up on the things we did today, tomorrow, and build off of them, and then the next day, and build off of those into the next day, and then build off of those into next week. Uh, I ain't going to be able to do all that. I said, okay, then let me go ahead and be this coach right now. <laughs> because that's what people don't understand in that situation. See, the things that I got you doing on Monday, I have to still continue to do those, build on that foundation on Tuesday, right? And then I have to continue to build on that on Wednesday, right? And then Thursday, right? And then, since Sean is in excellent shape, he doesn't work out on Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, you off that weekend, when we come back Monday, I got to start all over again because some of those things may have been forgotten, right? How many boxers going to want to do that? They're not going to want to do that, bro. No. So you don't want to take that role on as to be the coach, right? Right? You know, you don't want to be that guy. And you, you can't. You just can't be that guy that says, oh, my weight is over, but... I'm going to lie to myself and say, no, you can't lie to yourself, dude. I need to see your weight. You, right? I need to see it. The coach needs to see it, right? I need to know how much you're drinking. I need to know how much you're eating. Are you eating on time? Are you resting? Boxers can't do that. How much rest did you get last night? Yeah, right? but what do you, you, need, you need someone to oversee those things. Absolutely. Did you hear anything in Bud's voice from the As you can see, like I said, this is before the fight. And Kenny Porter stressing the importance of Sean Porter needing him. Sean Porter does not need Kenny Porter. Kenny Porter is actually holding Sean Porter back, if we're going to be all the way honest about it. He's holding Sean Porter back because although Customato, Teddy Atlas, a lot of trainers have tend to have similar traits of they don't take a lot of input, it's because those guys have dedicated 30 to 40 years of you know, being at a championship level of boxing knowledge to where they know it all, you know, and they still learn it. Angelo Dundee said he learned until he died and he was like 90 something when he passed away. So he's comparing himself to those guys. And we all know Kenny Porter doesn't have that type of experience. So maybe he should have listened to his son slash fighter and took that in consideration and formulated the game plan based off of him instead of it being my way or the highway. Kenny Porter is so self-absorbed that before the fight, he can't even focus on the fight. He's worried about Sean 
Porter disobeying his orders in the camp. But listen to these next two clips that I'm supposed to play for you. One of them is the post-fight interview where, you know, after the biggest fight of his son's life, you know, and after him actually making the ultimate decision to stop it, you know, he's he bashes his son on national TV in his lowest moment about the training camp. He can't get past the training camp. So he's bashing him before the fight about the training camp. Then he bashes him after the fight about the training camp. Brings in Javante Davis, who has none of the attributes of Terrence Crawford to spar him. And then Sean Porter takes the blame for the loss that he caused by stopping the fight. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. But like I said, Kenny Porter couldn't do his job effectively because he wanted to teach his son a lesson. And this became a personal vendetta. But listen to him bash Sean Porter. That's the toughest decision for a father or a trainer to make. What prompted you to stop the fight tonight? Honestly, it's preparation. He didn't prepare like I wanted him to prepare. So that's just, you know, that just makes me say, you know what? I don't want him in that situation. He fought a great fighter. The guy's super sharp. And he's at a deficit. It's like fighting this guy blindfolded. And you're in a deficit like that. So I wasn't going to let that happen to him. He looks in great shape, but only you knew what happened in the gym. How would you have liked for him to prepare that you didn't see? Well, I mean, you know, when, when guys get to certain levels, they believe they know what they're doing, and they don't necessarily take all the information. So, you know, this is where we at with it, and I had to make that decision. It's an easy decision for me. It's easy. He lives right across the street from me. I'll be having breakfast with him in the morning. It's easy. Andre Ward said you didn't stop it because of what happened there. It was about what you were seeing could happen. Was that accurate? Oh, no, definitely what he did, you know, and Sean was hurt. And so as Sean Porter told you earlier, he was more hurt in the Errol Spence fight, and the fight was not stopped. But Kenny Porter just said he stopped the fight because of lack of preparation. That doesn't even make any sense. Like I said, he robbed his son of greatness, of moments that will last forever. He, If he could have went 12 rounds or got up and knocked him down, who knows, he was winning the fight. Like, it was just the fight lived up to the expectations and Kenny Porter took and robbed his son of this moment. And it's really, really devastating because it's not only his trainer, but it's his father. It wasn't like Sean Porter was taking a massive beating. I'm not sure if the three knockdown rule was in effect, but it might have been. I mean, the referee was there to protect the fighter also. I mean, the referee didn't think it was bad enough to come in and stop it. But Kenny Porter climbs up and stops it. Like I said, I mean, Sean Porter had to fight two people that night. He had to fight his dad, who was hung up on training camp. And then he had to go in there and fight the toughest fight of his life. So, you know, I actually feel bad for him because Sean Porter earned the right to actually have input on his own training camp. And also earn the right to go out on his shield if he if he so pleases or give him the benefit of the doubt to have a conversation with him when he, if he makes it out the round or give him the opportunity to make it out the round. He's earned that in the sport of boxing. And he was robbed of that decision tonight, even though he earned it through blood, sweat, and tears. His daddy's never taken a punch for him. John Porter knew this would be a war coming in. That's why he dedicated this fight to Marvin Hagler. You know, it was a reference to Hagler Hearns and he was going to come out and give his all like he always does. And like I said, he was robbed of it. But in case you need further proof of that, listen to Kenny Porter say that he didn't even know Sean Porter was going to retire after the fight. So that kills that argument that people are making. Well, maybe he knew he was going to retire. That's even more of a reason to give him a shot at greatness and let him go out on the shield or give him a chance to win the fight. But listen to Kenny say he had no idea he was going to retire and that he had every intention on stopping the fight before the fight, which shows his motive. Knowing that this was probably going to be his last fight, he didn't want to. He didn't know. Uh, unless he, he had feelings of it, some, some sentiments of his own. But we just, this is a conversation we haven't had. When were you planning on telling him? Now. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any idea how long you have left in the 10th round? Had there been less time in the round, would you still have stopped it after the second knockdown? I didn't know stop it. Can you hear me? Yeah. I plan on stopping it going into the fight. I already knew this. But, but if there had been less time left in the round, like say... It didn't matter. 
Like I said, I mean, that's all the proof you need. He went in with the intentions on stopping the fight because of the bickering Sean Porter, or the resistance, rather, Sean Porter gave him in the training camp. I mean, and I felt like Sean Porter's earned his input, even though that's his father. He wasn't disrespectful, I'm sure, about his input. I mean, Kitty Porter could have just listened to him and did what he wanted to do anyway instead of feeling like he he's challenging his authority and that, you know, he's going to he's going to show him and teach him a lesson. And this next clip that I'm going to show you is very, very interesting. Uh, Sean Porter's mindset, because I could see after the fight, I felt so bad for him, not because he got beat, because I know he was robbed of an opportunity and he knows it inside. He knows he was robbed of the opportunity and he knows it's because of his dad. He just doesn't want to say it. And I could see that physically he was, he was, he, you know, the, the physical abuse he took that night is going to heal over time. The mental that his dad is going to give him lasts forever. And I could just see it in his walk and his like a dark cloud on the, the way out the ring. And it, when he was post uh, fight interview, when his dad's bashing him and you look at his face and he smiles, but his head is down the whole time. That's a telltale sign of, you know, that, you know, it hurts deep down inside. And um, in this next clip that I'm going to show you, he t he brings up Barry Sanders. And that's very interesting because Barry Sanders' dad was really, really hard on him. And it led to Barry Sanders retiring prematurely. Hmm. Interesting comparison, but listen. Hey, you know what the crazy thing is? Barry Sanders' dad will 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 look at him in the, in his eyes and tell him that he's not the greatest folk running back to ever play. That's just crazy. Like you know, what I mean, it kind of kind of hurts, kind of stings. You kind of over the years, I've learned how to how to grow past all of my dad's expectations and kind of like just pick the ones that are like the ones that I knew that I could reach and things like that. And then kind of whatever else I felt like he was expecting too much or demanding too much. It was like, man, I, I, I'm out to prove everything to everybody else. Why do I have to prove to the man that's been in my life the whole, my entire life, the same things that I'm trying to prove to the world. You know what I mean? So it does, it gets hard. Um, but going back to the analogy, when you got Barry Sanders, dad, look at him in his eyes, telling him, uh, that he's not the greatest running back to ever play, then, you know, you, you, I think if people knew that about Barry, then they would have a, a little bit more of a, okay, it just kind of happens with dads, you know, that dads want more and expect so much, and it just is what it is, you know. It's part of what made you who you are, right? It is. I mean, I, I told my dad last night, I said, thank you. So basically, I mean, he's saying that his father was too hard on him, just like Barry Sanders' dad was hard on him. And he retired just like Barry Sanders retired. Sean Porter cried after the fight uh, because he announced his retirement. I think it was because he was still feeling bad because of his dad. I mean, his dad doesn't pay attention, but this is a cry out, man. Like, you're too hard on your son. And your son is responsible for your success, just like you think you're responsible for his. But I think it's unbelievable the amount of mind control that Kenny Porter has over Sean Porter. Uh, a while back, uh, I made a video whenever he was fighting Keith Thurman. And uh, in that video, I pointed out the fact that I think that Sean Porter was going to leave Kenny Porter because he didn't have anything else to teach him. And he was being too hard on him because in that training camp, he was having they were, you know, having their bickering moments and stuff. And um, even after he lost to Kell Brook, he tried to hug his dad. Go back and look at that, how that worked out. I mean, after he lost to Keith Thurman, he tried to hug his dad after a tough loss, his dad didn't embrace him. I mean, he's just, Kenny Porter is just too hard on Sean Porter. Now this next clip I'm going to show you is of Sean Porter giving basically his version of what happened through the training camp and him trying to give his dad input and he wouldn't accept it. And here's the kicker. Sean Porter was actually right. He wanted the training camp to be a little bit more lax. So he had the energy and experience to go throughout the fight, maintaining that, uh, energy level and uh concentration that he was going to need to win the fight he was right he would he didn't want to leave it in the training camp basically and that was the only suggestion that he had and he looked very impressive during the fight 
because he had that mindset. A lot of older fighters do this to save their energy and their mental fo focus so they don't get burned out and they could focus it all into one area. But listen to the one time he didn't listen to his dad and the reaction he got. For this toughest fight when yeah. you didn't apparently have a good great camp. So I think, two, yeah, I, yeah. I think two things. I think number one, my dad and I, our communication isn't the best. My dad is always like, you do this, you do that. And I've always been okay, okay. And I think as I matured and got older, I got into a situation where it was like, I can't or I don't want to give as much or whatever the case may be. I always have my understanding of why. But it was, it's, it's like you can't explain that to Coach KP because Coach KP doesn't want to hear any ifs, ands, or buts. He's an old school coach. Mm -hmm. he's, a, he's an old school man. He doesn't want to hear that. And um, he's got the Montgomery brothers, and those that's how they are. And so, um, you know, he's got two good guys who are going to follow his commands and do what he asked them to do, and he's going to lead them to success. Um, I got to a point or have gotten to a point where it was like I realized I, I give so much in training and then when it comes to fight night it was like yo you 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 do so much from the opening bell that you gotta have to you kind of have to figure out a way to kind of preserve yourself through this fight and I think that it got in the way of my my fight with Terrence Crawford there were points where I should have been old school Sean Porter go 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 and I was like, if I go, 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 I won't have enough at the end. Mm. And I think that, uh, you know, that kind of, that got in the way of, of my performance. It really did. Um, but beyond that, yeah, I think it's just a communication thing. You know, it's one, one side is, you know, hey, you, you're not giving it your all. And the other side is like, I'm not going to tell you why I'm not giving it my all. I know is on the night of, I need everything that I got and more against this kid. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Always uh, amazes me with you that you, you become two or three times the fighter you were in the gym on fight night. Yeah, I've seen you. So there you have it. Had Kenny Porter focused more on the fight and prepare for moments like that, since Terrence Crawford was a a very very accurate and fast counter puncher. What am I going to tell my fighter when he gets knocked down? Instead of he didn't listen to me, he didn't prepare right. So the first sign of trouble, I'm just going to stop the fight. I mean, he robbed his son of an opportunity and he should apologize to his son because he robbed him of a chance at immortality. That's what he did of overcoming adversity. He owes his son an apology. Sean Porter was having great success up until the point where his dad decided to stop the fight when the knockdowns happened. And he was actually doing good. And I had him up on the scorecard. Surprisingly, he was doing a good job. If he would have had a more experienced corner, he would have won the fight. He would have won the fight, surprisingly. It would have been an upset, even though me and half America picked against him. If he would have had a Teddy Atlas or somebody that knew moments like that would come and better prepared uh, strategy-wise, he would have definitely won the fight. As far as, you know, fixing his habits of leaning, lunging in, et cetera, et cetera. He even hurt Terrence Crawford in the eighth round. But look at the leak to script boxing. I'm going to leave a link to father-son duos in boxing and why history repeats itself. But anyway, it's the Boxer Scholar, and I'm out.